Hey guys, Chris Dick here. So today we're going to be working through the installation of SSH on our virtual machine network on Azure. Now, um, it's uh, not super complicated to set up SSH, but you do have to think about a th few things before you go forward. Um, number one, we have our public IP addresses because our machines are running. The next thing that we want to be aware of is the private IP addresses. Now the private IP addresses identify our system internally to our network. So if you think about your home network, your home network will have a public IP address that, uh, that is known by your internet service provider. Uh, internally, that uh, your, your router uh, internally will say to all the devices connected to it, it'll say, here's an IP address and here's another IP address, and it just keeps giving out IP addresses. And generally, they stay pretty much the same. So we can be safe to say that for the purposes of uh, what we're doing here, we'll always have a fairly consistent private IP address, and that's, that's important to note. So let's get started here. Um, I'm going to load up WinSCP. And we've used WinSCP before. We configured it with these. I haven't changed anything and I didn't shut, shut down my uh, virtual machines in the meantime. So uh, my IP addresses are the same as they were before. So let's open up the name node 2, which is the th what we created in our first video. And we're going to be focusing on the SSH folder today. Now, our authorized keys are a file that essentially holds keys for authorized uh, access. And we're going to be using some of that access today. Uh, we are also going to be using that PEM file that we downloaded in the first video. So if you don't have that PEM file, um, make sure that you uh, watch the first video. It'll show you how to do that. So what we are going to do first of all is i'm going to bring this pem file over to the ssh folder okay now the pem file is uh, an important file because this key is essentially going to be residing on all of our cluster nodes okay and um, it's special because it needs to have a uh, certain permission set so to change that permission set uh, using winscp uh, you just have to right click and go to properties and we're going to change it to 400. You'll notice that it means that that 400 means that only the owner can read that file. And that's okay because it doesn't need to be written to at all uh, and it only needs to be read. So um, that file um, prop or permission set should work just fine for what we're trying to accomplish. Now, the next thing that we have over here is a config file. And I'm going to show you how that config file sets up. It's not a complicated file to, to do, but um, what it does is it tells uh, SSH um, how to connect to other systems. So I have a few common settings that I have set up. First of all, I, I'm saying here that any host um, that is connecting through this SSH will use the user by default uh, will be uh, Ubuntu. They will also be connecting with this identity file, which is the PEM file that we just pushed over to our, our, our node, our name node. And this line will identify the local host. Now it's just common practice. I've found that this has been a useful line here as well to have in. So just go ahead and do that. The other subsequent lines that you're going to have are identifiers for the name node. So this is the one we're on right now. And this is where we use that private IP address. OK, so if we look over at the no name node again, we can go in here and we can find the private IP address. OK, the private IP address is very important, as I mentioned, because it identifies it as a computer within the private network. So let's go back over to the config file and I have my data node one in there as well. And I know that it is a uh, at the IP address 10.1.0.5. OK, so if you've got all that in there, you should be good to go. It also has specific uh, permissions as well. 
Um, I usually have it uh, set at uh, 664. You really don't have to be writing to anything. Um, and in fact, you could set up to 400 just the same, but uh, I found that uh, 664 seems to be about the right mix for that file. And again, it doesn't need to be anything specific. Okay. Now, we're going to set up SSH on my name node. Now, do recognize that SSH is already installed on the server when you set it up in Microsoft Azure. But we're going to go through a few stages here just for the sake of um, understanding what's necessary if you did not have SSH installed. So if we look at, um, at, at SSH here, um, we, we already have it installed, but I'm going to go through this process of installing it through the app get uh, command line. Okay. And if you want, you can go to this, um, you can go to this, uh, the, this lesson here and you can get uh, the same, um, copy pasteable commands. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up, um, a, a, a a key pair file that allows us to communicate with the local host. Now, this is an important step because, um, it, it, we're, as I've mentioned before, I'm setting up this as a Hadoop cluster. So by doing this, what I'm working on here is I'm adding the, uh, the ability to communicate with the local host. And this is an important feature. So we'll just go ahead and copy this here. I'll explain what that does. So it says that it's going to run the SSH keygen. It's going to create a file. That's what this dash F means. Create a file named ID underscore RSA. The type is RSA. That's the, um, that's the security type, the encryption type. And then the password uh, is going to be blank. So we're going to be using passwordless SSH. All right. So you press enter. Now I could have run that with uh, without all those parameters. It would have just been SSH dash keygen. It would have just asked me all those questions and it would have been using the default. So it just saved me a little bit of time here. So what did this do? Let's go look at what it did over in the SSH folder. I'm going to load this up and you can see that um, it created these two nice new files here. And these are uh, identifier files, as I mentioned, these are our public and private keys. Okay. So if I um, don't have what I need to do, actually, sorry, is I need to add the key now the public key to my authorized key files. And again, that'll just make it easier for SSH to communicate. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste this. I'll explain what these these commands do. So what this did is it pushed the pub file. OK, kind of a neat looking command, but it pushed the, the pub file into OK, uh, the SSH authorized keys file. OK, and what you're going to see after that happened is it just simply added two before it did the addition. It was just this one. OK, um, and now we have two authorized key files or key entries, I should say. The next thing that I'm going to do is ensure that the authorized keys is set to the right permission level. So I'm going to set it to 600 and we're going to just refresh over here and see what that did for us. You'll see all it did here was just set the uh, permission file or the authorized keys to read and write. The reason we need to read and write is because just like we did before, we, we were able to push information into the authorized keys. And that's an important thing for us to be able to do. Now, um, the next step is that I want to be able to uh, SSH to the local host. And I should be able to do that for, with ease. Uh, we're going to say, yes, I want to identify this as a known host. And once we do that, we should have a screen that looks very similar to this. And that's essentially showing, yep, you've just logged into uh, name node. Now we're on the same node, uh, except we've created a new session within the, the same node. So if I click type uh, exit, all right, it's going to log out of that connection and log me back into name node. All right. Now at this point, I also 
uh, need to connect to our data node. So let's give that a try right now. Okay, we set up a config file there, um, but at this point it's got nothing, it doesn't know anything about us yet. So we're just going to try and hit it and see what happens. Okay, so right now, because the system recognizes us, it says, hey, you've got a PEM file that is exactly what I need. Um, why don't you, why don't you just allow open, uh, allow us in? We're just, it just gets us in pretty easily. Okay, but watch what happens here. I'm, I'm on, right now, I'm actually on the data node 001 computer. So let's try to see what happens going backwards. Okay, can we do it? And right now it says permission denied. And the reason is because on data node one, there's no identifiers there. So let's go over there and see what happens or see what that's looking like on that side. We can see this using WinSCP. So right now it said, I, I identify a known host, but I don't know what to do with it. Um, you'll see right here what that means, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do next is uh, I could just as easily just copy these config and, and SSH key pair files over. Um, but I'm gonna show you a little command here um, that I think is uh, really useful. And it's a secure copy command, all right? So let's exit out of data node. And we're going to do this. We're going to do uh, SCP dash p now dash p means that it's going to copy over the permission set uh, to the other uh, computer that we're virtual machine that we're using here so we're going to copy over our dot ssh config over to ubuntu at data node 001 okay colon and here's where we get into putting the same directory there. Okay, so what we're what we're doing here is we're going to copy the config file from our SSH folder over to the SSH directory on data node one, and you can see there's nothing over here to uh, to identify that it's there yet. So I'm going to run that, and I'm going to refresh, and there we have it. You want to check those permissions again it should be 664 so it looks good there and again you can set those permissions lower if you like or 400 should be fine and i'm just going to click up to get my last command and i'm going to go over here and i'm going to move our or copy our pem file dot pem okay so this is ssh key pair dot pem I'll run that and remember that was permission set 400 so let's just double check great it copied over the permissions I'll click on uh, properties to confirm awesome we've got all that set up now okay so let's give that a try here again we're gonna we're gonna SSH over to data node uh, one okay and I'm gonna try it again where I'm gonna try to uh, SSH over to name node and see what happens. Looks like we've got in now. So this is great. Now, um, we've done that. We can communicate back and forth, but what we did not do with, yet with this one is set it up to communicate with itself. So I'm gonna do that as well. And if you recall, we haven't done any kind of updates or anything pretty much on um, uh, on this server yet because we just went ahead and installed it in part two. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, we've got it up to date because as I mentioned, every time Azure installs this, uh, it automatically has SSH installed. So we're pretty pretty easy going there. I'm gonna copy that uh, code for generate the, generating the key gen. And you'll find that this process goes fairly quick. You could probably even create a, a batch file that, that does it all for you. Um, there are lots of other tools out there that will help you set these things up as well. But um, this is how we're, we're working with it today. Um, then we're going to copy into our authorized keys. OK, 
Okay. We'll push that in right now. We'll double check that it's there. Okay. We have two entries in our authorized keys now. And again, you'll you'll have uh, a very similar setup um, it, as you develop more clusters. You don't always have to connect from the data node to the name node, but as long as the name node can connect to the data nodes, uh, especially in a Hadoop cluster, that's all you need to be thinking about. So let's do one more test here. We're going to test local host. Local host. There we go. Okay, and we're in. We're into our own uh, data node one. So I'm going to exit out of that. And if you remember, I am in. I started off in, in name node and now I'm in data node. So I'm going to exit out of that and I'm exit, I've exited out of that and now I'm into uh, name node. Okay, so I'm right back to where we started. And if I click, if I type in exit here, it's going to close uh, uh, putty. Okay, so that is, uh, that is the, the whole method of setting up these communications between the devices. As I mentioned, you don't necessarily have to set up the communication from data node back to name node. It's more about connecting from name node to the data node. But I thought I would show you two different ways of, uh, of connecting and setting up the uh, two-way connection pattern there. Okay, so um, that's my video for today. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, remember to like and share. And uh, I'm still going to be producing a bunch of other videos. My next series is uh, coming up very soon. So I hope you like it. Uh, chat soon. Keep it up.